So while Disney doesn't have hugely high roller coasters like a lot of other theme parks do, they do have several things you want to be careful of and avoid if you are deathly afraid of heights. So we're going to go through that stuff today on DFB Guide. It's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and today we're talking about things you should avoid at Walt Disney World if you're afraid of heights. Now, you probably already know about a few attractions you'll want to avoid, but we've got some unexpected things on this list. So let's take a deep, calming breath and get moving. Number one, of course, is that Skyliner. So if you've been debating taking flight on Disney World's newest form of transportation, the Skyliner gondola system, you might want to think twice if you're height averse. Skyliner travels up to heights of 60 feet, according to Disney. And if that's not scary enough, you'll be watching the world fly by through floor to ceiling windows on both ends of the gondola. Views include the tops of buildings at Caribbean Beach Resort, the expanse of Hourglass Lake at Art of Animation and Pop Century, the parking lot at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and lots of treetops. So you'll definitely feel the height, even when you're not at the highest point. And remember, if there is wind going on, if it is a windy day, you will feel that on the Skyliner as well. So if that kind of freaks you out a little bit, that's something to consider. So plan ahead if you decide Skyliner isn't for you, catch a bus instead. And if you have some friends or family in your party who wanna ride the Skyliner, just make it a race. You stay safely grounded and use a bus while others take flight and use the Skyliner. They're probably gonna win, but if you avoid some freaky heights, you win too. Next up, we want to talk about Tower of Terror. So this Disney's Hollywood Studios ride basically encompasses what we're all scared of if we're scared of heights, right? It's falling. So the whole point of this ride is you get on an elevator and you get taken up many, many, many stories and then you're dropped. So this can actually affect both your perception of being very high and also kind of your worst fear coming true that you're being dropped. So if it's hard for you to separate perception from reality, this might be a rough one for you. Also at the very top of Tower of Terror, that window is going to open and you're going to see a wide expanse of Hollywood Studios from way, way, way up there. So that can be a little freaky for people. They know they're going to drop, they know they're going to fall, and then they see exactly how high they are. So this might be one to watch a couple of videos about, see a ride through or something like that before you actually take part if you are scared of heights. The next one we want to talk about is the Aerofile Balloon. So this is a high flying experience that can be particularly terrifying for people who are afraid of heights. Aerofile is the huge hot air balloon you've seen floating above Disney Springs. Now it's beautiful in shades of blue and bold red, and that balloon flies 400 feet up in the air to get some truly unique views of Disney Springs. But I'll be honest, it's really high. <laughs> and here, although there's sort of like a cage up there, it's kind of freaky. So something about the perceived fragility of a massive balloon and a tiny little viewing platform just doesn't work for for some people. So that coupled with the 400 foot height is surely too much for some height averse folks and even too much for people who usually don't mind heights. So take that into consideration. The next one you want to avoid if you're scared of heights is Summit Plummet in Blizzard Beach. Now, if you are afraid of heights, there are probably quite a few water slides you don't want to slide down, but Summit Plummet at Blizzard Beach is by far the most terrifying for many Disney guests. So the drop on this beast is just about straight down and you feel like you're free falling the whole way. And that whole way, yeah, it's almost 12 stories straight down, but the total length of the slide is 360 feet. So it's you in your bathing suit on a narrow steep slide for over 100 feet straight down and then over 200 more feet on top of that. So a glide down Summit Plummet has you cruising at speeds up to 60 miles per hour on your backside. And it has the distinction of being the third tallest water slide in the world and the fastest free fall slide in the world. So if you conquer it, there's something really cool about it. But those who hate heights, this one may not be worth the climb for you. Next thing we want to mention is the Astro Orbiter in Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland. This one blasts off some 60 feet above the ground. And that's mostly thanks to the ride's location, which is nearly two stories off the ground to begin with. So to board Astro Orbiter, you actually ride an elevator up to the loading area, which is over the people mover. That's about two stories up. And when you climb into a rocket ship that goes up another couple of stories, it can feel precarious to those who are afraid of heights. And it sounds silly to say because it's such a simple spinner ride, but it's 
it's all about that height making that ride that much more intense. It's a lot of fun for people who really, really love being up that high, but for people who are concerned about heights, this can be a little bit difficult. So if you want to experience a similar attraction closer to the ground, try those magic carpets of Aladdin, Triceratops Spin, or Dumbo. Do note that in Dumbo, even though you can control the height of your elephant throughout most of the ride, all the elephants do fly to their max in unison height before the ride ends. Now, the next attraction you might think about before you ride if you're scared of heights is Splash Mountain. Now, we know lots of people love the animatronics, the catchy song, and the overall whimsy of the ride, but if you don't like heights, that drop might keep you from enjoying all the fun stuff. The last and longest drop on Splash is 49 feet, seemingly straight down, but not really, into a dark abyss. Now, it's enough to rattle any rider, but if you already don't like heights, you're not gonna like the drop. For me, it's fun, it's a rush, and just before the drop, there's a fleeting but awesome view of the Magic Kingdom and Cinderella Castle, and I love it, but it is high, and it's too high for a lot of guests, I imagine. And you're going to want to avoid Splash Mountain if those cute vignettes on the inside of the ride aren't enough to make the drop worth it for you. Now let's talk quickly about simulators like Soarin' or Flight of Passage. Disney's simulator attractions like Soarin' Around the World at Epcot and Flight of Passage in Pandora at Disney's Animal Kingdom are really fantastic, immersive, great video quality, beautiful sights, and both have some innovative ride technology that makes you feel like you're really flying. You can feel the wind in your hair, smell the grasslands beneath you, and get splashed as you dive on your own personal banshee. But all the things that make these rides engaging and epic and epically popular are the same things that make the height of first person feel like they're teetering on the edge because in some cases your brain really thinks that you are. Actually, Soren and Flight of Passage, you might really be pretty high up in the air. And in the case of Soren, your feet will be dangling from about 80 feet in the air and you will notice the height as the ride system lifts you up in front of the show screen. So on Flight of Passage, it's a little harder to determine how high you physically are in the ride, but this one has some swoops that will definitely feel like you're diving. So we say skip the simulator if you're super freaked out by the format and the immersion because they do a great job of making things seem very realistic, your brain is very much tricked, and you will feel like you're high in the sky on both of these attractions. So something to think about if you're height averse. Now we want to talk about a couple of things that may bother those who are super, super, super concerned about heights. We're not just talking the people who don't want to necessarily go skydiving or bungee jumping. We're talking people who can't even look out the window a couple of stories up because these are restaurants that are in the top of their respective buildings. So first up, California Grill. This is on the 15th floor of Disney's Contemporary Resort and it has a great view of the Magic Kingdom, the Grand Floridian, and several other locations in Walt Disney World. And a nighttime advanced dining reservation here is a hot commodity with some guests planning their entire trip itinerary around the opportunity to dine on the seasonal and locally sourced menu with one of a kind happily ever after Magic Kingdom fireworks views. But if you're looking to enjoy this nighttime spectacular, you might want to do that from inside the restaurant. California Grill's outdoor observation deck feels every foot of its 15 stories and the views can be quite nice from inside the restaurant too. So request a seat further from the window when you arrive from your advanced dining reservation so you don't feel like you're right on the edge and you might even let them know you'd like to see fireworks but can't deal with the heights. You might get a little pixie dust. And also the rooftop dining at Toledo and Dahlia Lounge over there at Grand Destino Tower. So while this one has amazing views over Walt Disney World and they're expansive and beautiful, it can be a little unsettling up there. And Dahlia Lounge has an outdoor seating area that you'll most likely want to skip to because while it's comfortable and stylish, it's way up there and feels very exposed with just glass separating you from the heights if you dine on the patio. So if you do brave Toledo or Dahlia though, you could catch a glimpse of the nighttime shows at Hollywood Studios and Epcot and maybe that's worth pushing past the fear. We haven't gotten a chance to experience the rooftop at Riviera Resort just yet, but that will be 15 stories just like California Grill with an outdoor patio like Dahlia Lounge. So there are a few things around Walt Disney World that you might think twice before you do if you are height averse, afraid of heights, or just aren't sure how you feel about them. So I hope that's helped some of you to plan and to prepare for your Disney World vacation. Let us know in the comments what you guys think. Are there any experiences you had at Disney World where you were a little freaked out because you were afraid of heights? We want to hear your personal anecdotes, your experiences as well. As always, you guys, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.